they had a mobile recruiting station that sat on the corner of 8th Avenue and 1st Street West in Calgary. And it was somewhere around noon, maybe 11 o'clock on a morning, 4th of July, and I walked in and there was a little Calgary Highlander staff sergeant sitting there, First World War ribbons, and he said, uh, what can I do for you? And I said, I want to join the Army. He said, oh, then how old are you? And I said, 18. He said, you've got to be 18 and a half to go overseas. And I said, oh. He said, why don't you go out and take a walk around the block and think about that for a minute? I said, well, all right. So I went out and I walked around the block into the same mobile recruiting station, the same little Calgary Highlander staff sergeant. And he said, good morning, and what can I do for you? He said, I'd like to join the Army. He said, how old are you? And I said, 19. He said, that's better. So uh, I joined the Army. They were summoned from the hillside. There were 27,000 troops on board the ship when we went overseas. I went to the infantry training school in Yorkshire and uh, from there went to the Regina Rifles. And we did a number of exercises and all sorts of things, training, uh, before we went to, uh, to France. There were certainly feelings of, I wonder whether, uh, whether this is going to work out. Uh, uh, am, am I, am I going to survive? We landed in Courcelles uh, uh, sur Mer. It was scary. People were shooting at you. They were killing and wounding people. One of the prime examples of people doing and doing and doing was our stretcher bearer. Um, I, I say a kid by the name of Gib Boxall, but I guess I look at him now as a kid, but we were really all kids at that stage. Gib just kept doing his job as a stretcher bearer, going around patching up people, and he died either D7 or D8, I'm not sure which, but he died from loss of blood. And we discovered when they found his body that he had been wounded himself over five times. And just kept doing his job. Why did some of them pay the supreme sacrifice and other was managed to complete the day's adventure. Um, I don't know. Uh, just the luck of the draw. I wasn't overly religious, but uh, there, there were times when you were huddling down the bottom of that hole to the ground that you, you were praying for somebody up there and, and you're making them all kinds of promises. Uh, you get me out of here, I'll, I'll never be bad again. I'll never swear, you know, I'll never do this, I'll never do that. You, you made all kinds of excuses. You want him on your side. Kreerar's Canadian Army, including British and Polish elements, took the coast. In some cases, they were they, they would impede you because they came out and filled the streets with bottles of wine and flowers and 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 all sorts of things, trying to welcoming uh, the liberating troops. And I can remember uh, in France when you were getting your meals and you would finish your meal and whatever you had in your mess tin that you weren't going to eat, you went over and you threw it in the garbage bucket. The kids scrounging in there for for something to eat uh, really sort of shook you up and you wonder I guess how could people do this to kids you always felt uh, kids should be above this kids should be looked after because they're they're the innocents These are friendships that, that really 
were so close because you're, that was part of your family. They were even closer than your family because you lived and died together. Uh, sometimes lived and died in the same hole. And I guess they're the kind of friends that no matter how old you get, you're never going to forget them. They're part of your life. And they will be forever. There has to be a better way than sending people off to die. If that's the only way we can solve our problems, then humanity hasn't learned anything since we crawled out of caves. <laughs>